is at the very center of leadership. What is the single marker of good or bad leadership is judgments, judgment calls. That's the heart of the matter. It's the fundament. It's the nucleus of what leadership is all about. Daniel Kahneman, who did win the Nobel Prize for his work on judgment and decision-making, uh, emphasized how often and erratic our decisions are because we don't take into account those, quote, irrational things called emotions. Um, without folding that in, without feathering that into our studies of judgment and decision-making, we will never have a complete understanding of judgment. With all due respect to all the leadership gurus in the audience tonight, Shakespeare has got us all beat. You know, I mean, if John Kerry had ever listened to Falstaff, who was the executive coach for Prince Hal, he said, if you want to lead people, you got to enter their world. If you want to lead people, it doesn't mean you have to come out of that world, but you have to be in that world, you have to have the touch for that world. I mean, I keep using Caesar as a good example, this brilliant man, how did he miss so much? You know, so, this, so we have to augment what we do in, from science. And I think we're getting some really promising areas of the neurosciences of emotion. Let's take a look at um, um, Hal Raines of the New York Times, who seemed to be totally oblivious to what was going on with the, his, quote, direct reports. I mean, uh, he was warned, just like Caesar was warned. He was even warned better than Caesar. There was a, 18,000-word article about his leadership in the New Yorker magazine by Ken Oletta, which described in um, kind of breathtaking detail the problems that Howell Range was having. Yet a year later, when some of this stuff came out in a public meeting, Howell seemed utterly surprised. So really? They think I'm humiliating? They think I play favorites? They think I should have gone down to the news? It was all in print. If he had only spent a half hour every day being sensitive to those people who are just one floor below him in the newsroom, I mean, he would still be in office and thriving today. What a lack. So we talk about self-intelligence. We talk about so how one affects and, and understands the social network. And we talk about contextual intelligence. Uh, what is it that the person reads or doesn't read about the culture, this history? The, this uh, a Carly Fiorina, whom I was rooting for. And it seemed to me that um, she missed a fundamental aspect of any organizational change agent, which is not to adhere to the symbols of tradition and the past, simultaneously look to inventing the future. And that's a hard row for anyone to navigate. And we're, I think, giving some, I know giving some important clues to all these forms of intelligence. Think of it almost, uh, an, an, I'm going to make an analogy to the heart. The problems with most bad decisions is that the information pipeline that is relevant and meaningful data are not getting to the right people at the right times. This is very like getting the rich oxygenated blood into the heart and getting it there properly without any arrhythmia, without any clogs. And when we've looked at enough bad judgments, almost always there's some rupture some fracture in the information pipeline.